Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. So excited to be here today with my very special guest, Charvette Mitchell. And just in case you didn't catch that first name exactly, that is Charvette, like a Corvette. Woohoo! And I didn't come up with that. Charvette did, but I asked her if I could steal it from her. So, Charvette and I are literally meeting for the first time here today. So, we are going to get to know Charvette together. And I'm going to start by just giving you her official bio. Charvette Mitchell is an online strategist who works with female entrepreneurs and a few lucky men <laughs> to help them build their platform and personal brand so that they generate more revenue. And Charvette, I can tell you that, uh, as you know, the very first thing I asked you was, is that fuchsia? I love fuchsia. And is that your brand color? And you said? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kathy. <laughs> um, yes, it is a part of my brand. So anywhere that people interact with me, they are going to see this color. So I'm super excited to be here today. Thank you so much. And you couldn't pick a better color than fuchsia, in my opinion, because that is one of my favorite colors in the whole wide world. And it looks really good on you, too. Thank you so much. And your blue is smashing. <laughs> Thank you. I guess I have my brand blue and tiara on today. So if you are listening to this on audio, I highly recommend going checking this out on my YouTube channel because you want to see this. You want to see this beautiful woman, Charvette. So um, thank you so much for, for being here and taking the time to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. So we're going to jump right in with the first question, if that's okay with you. Yes, let's rock and roll. <laughs> cool. So I just would love to know a little bit about your journey, how you went from um, not having a business to daring to leap into your own business and what's happened from there. Wow. Oh, so I love just sharing this. Um, it all started at a girlfriend's kitchen table um, probably 13 years ago now. Um, her name is Edwinette Moses, and she was starting a medical consulting business. And so my degree is in marketing. And so we were doing brochures and all the kind of marketing type of things. And I stopped and I said, well, wait a minute. We, before we go print off all this stuff, magnets and all that kind of stuff, we need a website address. Like we need to put your website address on this. So I said, I'll go figure it out. So I went and figured out this little ringy dang website and put it together. Then people started asking me, could you do a website for me? Could you do one for me? And I figured out I had a business because I paused one day and said, wait a minute, I think people pay for this. Like, I don't think I'm supposed to be doing this for free. And um, that's how I recognized I had a business. At the time, I was working in corporate America. So I was just kind of building my empire um, all along, you know, putting, going to work and then putting my Wonder Woman cap on or, or cuffs on, uh, you know, after work and doing, <laughs> <laughs> doing the web design thing. Um, and I was comfortable, Kathy. I was I was really comfortable. I fortunately did not have the the story that some people have who really hate their jobs and hate their bosses and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I didn't have that story. Um, I was comfortable until I became uncomfortable. Until I came, there became a period in time where I felt like I was in a box. And I started thinking, when we talk about daring to leap, I started thinking, what would it look like? What could this be if I could dump all of Charvette into Mitchell Production? What could that be? And one thing, you know, a lot of people talk about your why and all of that. Really what was my driving thing to take the, take the leap was I did not want to look back and have regrets. That was the only, that was my, I didn't want to look back five years, 10 years, whatever year and say, I should have done it. I, what, what could have happened if I didn't do it? And so I, I threw all the cards on the table and bet on myself. 
And I walked away from a 25-year career in corporate America at a company that probably a lot of the viewers and listeners are familiar with, What's in Your Wallet. You all can guess and put it in. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but, I know um, that one. <laughs> walked away after 25 years. Um, February 2018 um, was the last time that I did any work for that company. And I've got to tell you, um, zero regrets. Zero regrets in taking the leap and, and throwing all the cards on the table for myself and betting on myself. And um, so here we are. So the business started as, as web design really 13 years ago. But then along the way, the consulting and the online strategy came about um, because once people got a website up, then they were like, well, what's next? What am I? And then that's when you get into social media marketing and email marketing and all those good things. So that's the, the long winded version of my dare to leap story. Now that's a really good, that wasn't long-winded at all. That's a really okay. good story. So, <laughs> no, that was a really good story. So, um, I have to say that when you said you'd been there 25 years, I was shocked because I thought you might be 25 years old. Listen, I'm not kidding you. Jeans, good jeans. <laughs> and I started working when I was 13, but you know, we won't talk, we won't talk about that. I'm just <laughs> Child labor law, people going to be all over that. But, uh, <laughs> Good jeans. Thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah, you got really good jeans because seriously, I was shocked when you said you were there 25 years. Yeah. So it sounds like um, you worked at the corporate job and did your business on the side for yeah. a while. Yes. Is that right? Absolutely. And how did, how, how did you manage all of that? And um, just talk a little bit about that because I know there are a lot of people that really would like to do it that way to ease into it. Yeah, and I actually would recommend that. I would ac actually recommend if you are thinking about any viewers, listeners thinking about um, jumping into business, I would actually recommend that you do start. Um, and so uh, you manage your time. You know, there's weekends, there's evenings, there's holidays. I even, you know, posted not long ago, the last holiday I posted on Facebook. You know, I remember when I was in corporate America, I looked forward to holidays because I would just work on my business. And so you utilize those times. Now, I will say I was a virtual worker for many of the those years. So the balance was a little bit easier, uh, you know, mm -hmm. for me because I was virtual and working remotely, which set me up for entrepreneurship. So they actually paved the way, trained me, didn't know it, but trained me to work virtually and, and interact with virtual groups and, and teams and all of that all over the United States. And so um, really, it's really about managing your time and energy, Kathy. Sometimes you will have the time, but you don't have the energy. And so it really is a, a balance of doing, of doing that and giving yourself grace. You know, if there's a week where you're slammed at work, or there's a time period at work. So the, at that point in time, uh, what I worked on was in quarters. So the beginning of a quarter and the end of the quarter was really slammed. Well, I'm not going to do a big launch in my business and know that I'm slammed at the end of quarter, you know, at in the corporate America. So you kind of balance things out that way. And you mentioned energy. Do you have any tips on how to keep your energy up? Because I totally agree with you. It's my energy that usually prevents me from working, getting more done rather than the time. Yeah. Um, li like listening to your body. Like if you're go to, you know, like go to sleep, <laughs> like if you're tired, like go to sleep, might, you might need to take a nap. Um, but then here's the other thing. Like if your energy is, is high and you might, you know, you might be up at midnight and you're like, I got all this energy. So operate and do the work that you need to do when your energy is there. Don't kind of look at a framework of, well, it, I shouldn't be up at 1 a.m. doing this, you know, but if that's where your energy is. Now, that's not sustainable. I'm not, I'm not the one that signs up to say, you know, grind, sleep when you're dead and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm not signing up for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hear people talk about I can't have to sleep when you're dead. I, I have. I love my sleep. I am not giving up my sleep. <laughs> right. So I, I say pay attention to your body. Like if you need to go to sleep, go to sleep, but then recognize mm -hmm. that there's a, a period where you're like, I've got energy, I'm moved, like monopolized, like boom, 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 and get things done. So great tip. Thank you for that. And um you mentioned that you were lucky because you got to work virtually. You're you, you were able to have that side job more easily because of that and you already learned how to work virtually as a result of that. 
Well, right now, Charvette, with the COVID and the lockdowns and the work from home happening quite a bit, I think maybe there's a lot of opportunity there for people rather than worrying about COVID and thinking about that all the time to potentially tap into that dream that they've had of starting a business and do that on the side while they're working from home remotely. What do you think about that? There's so much opportunity um, right now and, and, and really ongoing because people's mindsets have shifted uh, in this virtual space. It used to be um, that sometimes people thought, oh, well, if it's a virtual business, you're not really in business. Like if you don't have a brick and mortar <laughs> and you're not paying a lease, like you're, you're not mm-hmm. really in business. And that mm-hmm. has, the paradigm has shifted and it will never oh, yeah. go It will never go back. We're seeing it in in the education. We're seeing it everywhere. So um, that's an opportunity for those that have a dream, have an idea, have an area of expertise to to launch in and be able to offer that virtually. But here's the other thing. If you're working full time, you no longer, if you're still in the space of this, of COVID, you no longer have the commute time. Um, you no longer have an extensive, like you just got to get dressed from the waist up. Like you ain't even got to figure out a whole, <laughs> you ain't even got to figure out a whole outfit. <laughs> dress from the waist up. So you cut down time. So maybe, you know, some of that time, that you were using for commute and getting a full outfit together um, that you could spend a little bit in the morning on your business. Lunchtime, you're not necessarily going anywhere that much. So you've got food on the crock pot or whatever. So your lunchtime, may, you may have some more time there. In the evening, you may have some more. So there are pockets of time. Um, I remember a young lady saying, and I don't know where she got this from, but she, she, she would have this little acronym, TAM. Time, no, TMA, time magically appears. So a lot of times it was like, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time. But um, she would just say, you know, T- TMA, TMA, time magically appears that there, there's this time that's in our days that we just have to recognize. Um, and then this opportunity too of how can you deliver your, your expertise, your product or what have you virtually because now everyone is open to it. Yes, and... In a business like yours where you are working virtually and you're, what kind of services do you primarily offer at this point, Charvet? Yeah, so I'm working a lot with um, dynamic leaders and and business owners around their visibility and their branding, um, their personal branding. And so what are the things that you can do to build your platform that then raises your visibility and draws attention to you and then people hear about your business. And that's a lot of with social media, live streaming, getting media attention, maybe it's starting your own podcast, speaking, hosting events virtually or in person. And so that's a large part of the work that I'm doing one-on-one uh, consulting and group coaching. And then I also do um, still have web design services where I'm uh, supporting leaders and businesses on that. Well, that's really exciting because I'm hoping that you're experiencing the same thing that the people that I train, I train people how to be virtual experts. And from the end of February to now, they have had their biggest months ever because there are so many businesses out there needing this kind of help and realizing they need this kind of help. Are you experiencing that same thing with a lot of people coming out of the woodwork going, uh, well, I've put this off for a long time, and now I realize I have to do this. Absolutely. I've been fortunate. You know, there are peers who, you know, I know that have studios and things of that nature were grossly impacted. Um, but I was oh, yes. fortunate that um, that has not been the impact for me. And so mm-hmm. the, the opportunity, there, there are huge amounts of opportunities. And I, and I agree, yes, I have, have seen great benefit from this time period. Yeah, and sometimes I know, uh, Charvette, you, the way you're talking about this sounds like I have felt too, which is a part of me wants to jump for joy and go, wow, this is our time, those of us who've already been doing this work and working online, and here we are perfectly positioned, and yes, that's great for us, but then on the other side, we hesitate to celebrate it because there are so many people suffering right now, and I'm sure that. I'm sure yeah, that's exactly. how you feel delicate, too. A delicate yeah. dance and a delicate balance. Yes. yes. <laughs> but I don't think we should minimize our successes because we did have that courage. 
yes to dare to leap into this when Absolutely. others didn't Absolutely. And um, there are people with, um, you know, traditional, what some might say traditional businesses that are now mm -hmm. looking like, what, how do you do Zoom again? And what, well, let mm -hmm. me see how I can incorporate that. So um, there, there is definitely an awakening in that space. And so we're positioned well. Yeah. So when you think about, let's, let's try to give those guys a little, some few tips here, because they might be listening to this going, yeah, I've been thinking about moving online what should I do? So what would you tell somebody who has that brick and mortar, who has not um, really jumped into the online world yet, is still trying to figure out, you know, do I wait until this is over? What do I do? So what would be your recommendation for those businesses? Yeah, absolutely. Um, jump in now. So I have a client um, in, a, in a similar situation, boutique owner. Um, and so now it's like, hey, writing is on the wall of being more visible online. And so one of the first things was getting in that social media and, you know, working in like <laughs> working social media, like a job and, you know, putting the pictures of all your products in on social media and letting them, Hey, this can be shipped to you. This can be delivered to you. Um, there are a lot of options now. So if it was something that they had to pick up, it can be shipped or delivered, or could it be curbside pickup? Um, you know, no contact pickup. So those types of things. And then um, the third thing is around the email list. So hopefully, hopefully they've been building an email list. So staying in contact with their with their customers by way of email, and then letting them know here's the here's the other ways um, that we can get products to you versus you coming into the boutique. This is what we can do. And then the third piece of that is there a service component that attaches to your product? So in this boutique example, um, now she is available for styling. So she can, st and that can be done by Zoom. So if you yeah. got an event or got something now I'm not I'm not just focused on my product but now let me talk about my expertise and I can style you or I can go find items for you send you the pictures here here's the layout of the outfits that you need for this reunion that's coming up in December or whenever um, so then looking at that so those will be those will be the three things a recap of that social media like working that like a job and putting your your products and whatever you have out there and how can people get them and then also your email list is very key, staying in contact and letting them know. And then what other service is a nice complement to your physical product and how can you offer that virtually? Well, I'm going to tell you, you just got me super excited because I really hate shopping. I, uh, I truly hate it. I have never liked, I mean, in-person shopping online. I can shop all day online, listen. but having to leave my house and go to the store and try stuff on. I am I am signing up for whoever that is that will style me from my house via Zoom. I'm into that all day long. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. I mean, how many aren't? That's And the other thing that I think is really taking off is not only that part, but styling you so you look good, like you said, from the waist up. Yeah. Because that's what we're seeing. And your background, like my background is not cool right now. That is literally a shower curtain. <laughs> Wow, we would not have known it. <laughs> yeah, well, now you do. And um, and I don't have a ring light yet right here either. And I know I need that. So if somebody could get on here with me and go, okay, now here's what you need to do. Here's what you should do for your background. Here's what you should do for your lighting. And if they ma would make me look even better, I'd be like, yes, thank you. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so three great tips. Thanks so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you do consulting also. So if somebody is out there and they're thinking, yeah, because I hear this a lot, Charvette, yeah, but not my business. There's mm -hmm. no way my business could really do what she just recommended. Mm -hmm. um, would Are you somebody that they can reach out to and you can do a consultation for them to have Absolutely. them identify how they could do that? Because I think you're like me and I believe no matter what business you do, there's something you can take online. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Love to chat. Charvettemitchell.com, complimentary consultation, and we can chat uh, about the, all of the possibilities. Fabulous. I know that um, the virtual experts that are in my membership program, they 
have they reached out immediately talked to all of their clients and said let me help you figure out how to get online and make money and yeah. many of them have made more money online than they did at their brick and mortar and i hear stories like that and i know they're analogies but um if you just try this while you're not able to do your brick and mortar anyway or limited to your brick and mortar it's not going to hurt you to try it and then you'll know you may absolutely fall in love with it and say i'm never going back to that brick and mortar or yeah. you might say hey now i have two streams of income right absolutely and and you might notice that the online income might overtake the brick and mortar mm -hmm. yeah i i hear i watch um tv every day uh news every day where somebody whether it's a doll maker or a game store or some other store that you would never think would do well online i'm gonna tell you one they, this lady made dolls and i gotta tell you they were not that cute i didn't know <laughs> I was literally like, people buy that? And <laughs> I'm out of everybody. I know. And she, and she said, I went online and I have sold twice as many now that I'm online than I ever did in my store because she can sell US wide rather wow. than right there, just local or worldwide, literally. Honestly, and that's really the, the opportunity is that you don't have to, sometimes we get um, conscious of, well, just these people here know me and I don't know if anybody right. will like my stuff. I don't know if anybody, when there is a, there's someone in Wichita, Kansas that wants your product or service and you're limiting right. yourself to, you know, a 20 mile radius. Yes. Just like my tiara. I got online. I found, I, I'm constantly looking for new tiaras uh -huh. and <laughs> and I had I had Googled crystals and I had Googled tiaras. And you know how Google is. They'll put your stuff together and they'll show you something. And they yeah. showed me this and I was like, where has that been all my life? Yeah. And I think the people who make it live in Georgia. Look so and I'm in Missouri. Yeah. Wow. No biggie, right? To just show <laughs> right. that, so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we've been talking about all these businesses that people can build online. Let's talk about when they're ready to scale and they want to grow from just that one man show and grow bigger. You have a team of your own. Can you tell us a little bit about how you, your team operates? Do they come to your house and work or are they virtual? How does that work? How does that work? That That's so great. So um, vir primarily virtual. Um, so I have a, a virtual office manager um, that supports me weekly. Um, shout out to Tara. And I will say she uh, is local. So when I have things like brand photo shoots for clients um, that are multiple ones, she is able to be um, hands on site. I host a conference every year. She's able to be hands on site. But primarily, we are working virtually. Um, and then I also have a... Um, developer who um, is a contractor that comes in there's some troubleshooting with some of the websites um, help support help support that he's virtual and then um, from time to time I will I will contract out specialized skills such as copywriting so I'm working with a copywriter right now to build out you know tens 10 series email sequence. I've had a contractor um, for about a year and a half who just did the normal emails that, you know, that I send out to um, clients. So I'll do specialized um, contractors like that. But I will tell you, um, Kathy, I started with having contractor support and virtual assistant support when I was working full time. So I realized, oh, wow. right, when I was working full time um, and that um, young lady, um, was able to support my podcast, my podcast talk radio show at that point, um, with getting guests and, and creating the graphics and all of that. So I really want to encourage people to think about getting support probably before you think you need it. You might be thinking, oh, I need to be full time. I need to be out here. I need to know if you're working, if you're working full time now, what a great way to add another set of hands. So my first um, virtual, you know, support was while I was working full time. And so um, those are the types of people that are, are supporting me. And I might be leaving out uh, something, but that's the, the bulk of the team. Yeah, they're going to, that person's going to listen to this podcast oh, no, and say, I'm thanks not for that. Sharma. <laughs> <laughs> How could you forget me, Sharma? Um, so such a great tip. I 100% agree with you. Yeah. Bring on a virtual assistant or 
a virtual expert or an independent contractor specialist, whatever you call them, um, earlier than you think you need them. Because when you wait until you're desperate, then you, you, your business is not growing as much. You get very overwhelmed. And if you're doing this on the side while you're working, oh my gosh, I love that you already hired a VA while you were doing that. Yeah. That is brilliant because that is, I mean, you've got the money to pay them and you, and you need that extra time. So that's a great tip also on how to uh, TMA. I'm, a, I'm stealing that. Yeah, yeah. And yes, I love that. And here's the thing, having virtual support um, makes you get your ducks in a row. So, oh, you know, yes. so you so if you hire or contract earlier than when you think you need it, because you have to be able to explain someone what you want them to do and have procedures and processes and all of that in place. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't want to wait when you got this whole big you run around with the chicken with your head call, cut off. Now you got to document <laughs> procedures. So do mm -hmm. it in all steps. So, you know, those procedures back, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember it, it had, well, if I've been full-time almost two and a half years, it was five or six years ago, you know, that I had that first virtual support. Um, but mm -hmm. guess what? Once I did those procedures for her, then the next virtual support person I could hand off. Then the next virtual support person mm -hmm. could come in and take mm -hmm. over. And even things mm -hmm. like graphics, Kathy, I see people spend 400 hours trying to do a little Canva, a little graphic for their mm -hmm. contract that out. You know, con get a mm -hmm. virtual expert mm -hmm. to do that. That is not worth mm -hmm. your energy and your time. Mm -hmm. But Absolutely. Just spend goo gobs of time on something that they could contract out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, let's. There's so much there. I want to unpack a little bit of it. Um, the graphic design thing that you were talking about. Yes. Uh, I do not have an eye for any of that. Okay. The only thing I know is once I see it, what I like. Mm -hmm. Okay. But. Just like everybody else, sometimes I go down that rabbit hole of, oh, this isn't going to take any time. I'm going to do this. And I did that with Canva, and I spent probably four hours, I'm not exaggerating, yep. piddling around with this thing, trying to get it to look good. When I was done, after four hours, I looked at it and thought, well, that is so horrible. I cannot <laughs> even use it. <laughs> so then I hired somebody to do it. And... um so my thought is somebody should work with you. If they don't have their brand in line yet, work with you, get that brand in line, yes. then hire somebody who, a virtual expert who can go into Canva, upload all of that stuff they've created with you, their logo, their colors, their um, pictures, fonts, yes. pictures, all of, all of that into their Canva. And then that person can actually log into their, this is what I do. I have all of this in Canva. My uh, virtual expert logs in. He designs everything right in there. Everything, my PowerPoint, my um, memes, everything. So that if he's gone, I can go in there and grab anything I need and use it. Um, and I can change like a couple of words and not have to change the design exactly. um, and do that if he's gone. But if not, I just have him do all of it and send it to me. There you and go. it's so easy. And it looks, <laughs> it actually looks like somebody developed it that knew what they were doing rather than a child's drawing. Right. <laughs> because as easy as Canva is to use, you can still make things look really bad. Yeah. <laughs> if you or don't they know just what you're doing. Look you know, it's, it goes back to time and energy. So it goes back yes. to that four hours uh, that you spent. Now your energy is zapped and then it doesn't still doesn't mm -hmm. really look like what you want it to look like. And, and you can't mm -hmm. get that time or energy back when you could have been consulting, That's right. whatever you do to help transform lives and businesses. Right. More neat. And listen, I have a little bit of a design. I, I have, cause I do web design. Web design and graphics are two different skill sets, just for those listening and watching, two different skill sets. They I, absolutely are. And anybody that says, can you do both? And they say yes, you go, okay, I'm not well, hiring you. They can, but usually people slant one, you know, there's usually yes. slant more one way or the other. Uh, and you're going to pay yeah. more. If they have figured out both, then it's, that's a higher skill set. But um, That's right. I will contract graphics. That's probably the, you know, I will contract out mm -hmm. graphics and, and mm -hmm. 
say go, you know, do these some simple things I call throwaway graphics that I'm going to just use one time. And if I and I'm huge on templates, Kathy. So if I create, if you all come to a webinar, by advertise a webinar, I'm listen. I used that webinar graphic last July. I used it last January. I'm just changing the date. So I'm huge about repurposing graphics. Oh yes, nature. So if it works, don't try to fix something that's working, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is, what is that saying? If it's not broken, don't fix it. Absolutely. Huh? Um, yeah. And, you know, your brand, your brand is your brand. It's going to look good. And in, and unless it starts looking dated, which um, websites in particular, Charvette, yeah. and since you're a website guru, um, I feel like the websites can get dated really quickly just by the shape and size of them and the way they operate. I mean, at a glance, and I, I know nothing about websites other than when I look at them, I can tell who's got an old website, who's got an up-to-date website. And if yeah. it's an old website that has not been up-to-date, I worry that that person isn't up-to-date. And that the business isn't up-to-date. The company isn't up-to-date. They may even be out of business is what I often think. Absolutely. So I move on. Right. And so, and you know, that you as a consumer with that observation, I think that is such great information for those listening who have websites, keep them up to date, you know, put, go in and check because your bio has probably changed. Oh, at least every six months, you know, something has happened. Mm -hmm. Have a blog mm -hmm. on your website. A blog is a quick indicator because it usually has the date beside the blog that oh, yeah. there's some recent activity. Plus, the search engines are looking for activity. If a website mm -hmm. is stale and untouched, Google and all the search engines kind of push it back further down. Like, yep, ain't nothing much going on here. And so mm -hmm. then you, that's working against you from people finding mm -hmm. you. Yeah, so... Um, one of the other things I wanted to mention was we're talking about all these great things because you and I, we've been working online and we've been marketing our business for years now. Mm -hmm. And those who are listening who are saying, oh my gosh, all of that is way too overwhelming. I have no idea where to start. I'm already so far behind. And, I, and I've heard them say far behind or I've heard them say, I have to start over. Mm. So when you... When somebody says, I don't want to start over, or somebody says, um, I'm so far behind, what suggestions would you have for them how to think about this instead? Mm -hmm. um, so start where you are. Start where you are. If you think about um, somebody walking in a desert and there's a, a mountain horizon way far ahead, and you're walking and you're thinking, gosh, I can't, we is so far, it's so far. But Every step you take gets you closer to that mountain. And then once you take 10 steps, now you're closer. Then you take another step, now you're another step, now you're closer. What happens is people stop and they get stuck. And so then that mountain never gets closer and they never move. <laughs> so the first to so to encourage yourself to take one step. And maybe it's something small as I you I love starting with social media because I, I feel like that's the lowest hanging fruit. That's the quickest place that you can feel a success. Um, you mm -hmm. can get a win. And a lot of times people may be in that space of I'm so far behind or I feel like I'm starting over just needs like a small win. Um, so can you post on anywhere on social media, you know, that you have a product or service or something for sale and invite people to look at a sales page or if they don't even have that to inbox you for information um, just to get their confidence up in people interacting with them. Um, social media is where I would start. Now, if they got a, a little bit more courage Jumping on a Facebook Live or a video is going to triple that exposure. Um, but if, if they can just take a step to say, I'm going to two or three times a week, put out on social media that I have XYZ product or service, reach out to me, or this is how you reach out to help them. At least even if people just click like and say, congratulations. You know, sometimes you're like, well, people are clicking like and saying, congratulations, or I didn't know you did that. I didn't, one of my mm -hmm. friends, um, her mom, tell, shout out to Tony, her, her mom um, creates this custom hot sauce. And I'm not even that much of a hot sauce mm. person. And so I was over her house one day. I was like, oh, I want, I want some hot sauce. So she's like, my mom's selling it. She's trying to get it into Whole Foods and all this other kind of stuff. And um, so she brought me a bottle of the hot sauce. Well, I took did a little video. I happened to have makeup done today, Kathy. So I was like, let me do a video. <laughs> and I hold up this hot sauce and I share it. And it, the video has like a thousand views, just about hot sauce, like just me sharing. 
And she got orders, stacked up orders. And there were people that commented on her, Miss Nixon, shout out to Miss Nixon and the, it's Caribbean. Let me get the hot sauce right. Um, and she, and people, <laughs> people were commenting, I didn't know you even had hot sauce. I didn't, I didn't know that you even did this. I didn't, and mm -hmm. all of it just one step of just putting it out there. And she got orders, like stacked up, took a shot, a picture of the, bo of the boxes of things she's mailing out. And there were just people that saying, I didn't know, I didn't even know. So you just got to let the yeah. world know that you have something. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, you know, something that I saw that was just... Hot sauce. I'm sorry. I, I Say mean, it again. Taste of Say Caribbean. it again. Taste of Caribbean. Taste of Caribbean hot sauce. Just want to shout her out. Okay. And Charvette, if you want, we will put a link to that. Oh, okay. Um, on our show notes. Yes. <laughs> and I'll because I, the video too. I, I love hot sauce. Oh, I am a hot okay. sauce lover. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll be giving that a try. See, I mean... When you listen to this Dare to Leap podcast, you never know where this is going to go. You never know. <laughs> Tierra's and hot sauce. You never know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, so you made me think of a couple of other things. Um, let's go. Uh, oh, I know what it was that I wanted to mention. One more tip on the social media thing. I saw somebody do something this simple, um, just like you're talking about. It can be something as simple as what you just said or ask a question. Um, that I'm thinking about doing blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking about uh, selling this hot sauce that everybody in my family loves. Type yes below if you'd like to know more about it. Yes. And I'll PM Brilliant. you. Brilliant. That's, that is it. Brilliant. That's all you have to do. That's it. <laughs> That's literally how my um, Facebook group started. I, I just noticed kind of on my personal page, it was like a lot of internet. I was like, I need to pull this somewhere. And I made a comment. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm thinking about starting a Facebook group for female entrepreneurs. If you think it's a good idea, comment yes or no. Hundred, like 100 people were like, yes. They were like the founding members. And starting that Facebook group was one of the pivotal things that shifted my the trajectory of my income, hands down. Mm -hmm. Because then that led into an mm -hmm. event, hands down, by that one question of, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about doing this. Who's interested? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And those things we're talking about right now, these tiny steps that you take, how much do they cost to do? Zero. Right. They cost nothing. <laughs> I mean, and people that um, say, if they're like, oh, I just, I'm nervous about putting myself out there, or I don't want people to feel like they have to buy from me. Any advice on that? That is fear of visibility is what you're dealing with. Fear of visibility and that a little of that is fear of success. Some people don't fear failure. They feel, well, what, what happens when this light shines on me? And what happens when the, when the hot sauce sells out? And I, now I got to figure out all the packaging and all that. So that's fear. So recognize that that's fear. Um, but a lot of times that's a woman say that. So I'm going to talk to the yes. woman because you don't hear men entrepreneurs say those things. And so that's some of right. That, those are women. And some why that, is that? Some of that is the social, the climate, the society thinking that has we no, we shouldn't, we should be quiet, we shouldn't do more, we shouldn't. So some of that you just gotta shake that off because McDonald's mm -hmm. doesn't care that they show you the same commercial six times in one sitcom. None of these big brands have stopped running commercials <laughs> during COVID. I did. I had clients who were kind of like, I don't, you know, during the COVID period, I didn't, I don't want to be insensitive. I don't want to sell. Listen, none of these other big brands stopped any of their selling, selling in any of their commercials. And, and the other thing you got to think about is that you have something that is solving a problem for someone. When you say, I don't want people to feel like they have to buy, you you have a solution. What I don't care what it is, if the hot sauce or if it's a $10,000 program, you have a solution to a, a problem somebody has. And that's the shift in thinking. Now, I don't want people to feel like I'm trying to make them buy. No, you're giving them right. an opportunity to solve a, mm -hmm. solve a, a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's fear like, the bottom. Um, my, I, I don't cook very well. And that's part of the reason I like hot sauce a whole lot because it covers, <laughs> it covers up the taste of my food. It makes my food taste so much better. So I didn't know about this amazing hot sauce. 
And because it's not out there enough, and if you hadn't mentioned it, I still wouldn't know about it. Right. And it could change my life because it could make everything taste so good. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All the way to, like you said, a $10,000 program where somebody teaches you how to build a business or yeah. helps you build a business. And suddenly you have all, you have an online business where you're making a great income yeah. instead of sitting home and wishing that you, your brick and mortar was back up. Wishing and open. Yeah. 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 Lots of great tips. Yeah. Um, so back to your team. Yes. You mentioned that it was virtual. Mm -hmm. And you talked a little bit about independent contractors. So is it 100% independent contractor, a mix of employee and independent contractor? What's your, what's your take on that? So I have 100% independent contractors. And what do you feel are the benefits to having the independent contractors? Um, so the benefits have been you can you can scale and grow, you know, so if you need to shift around or shift resources, or if you don't only have a need. So for instance, the copywriting for the email, um, once we do this series, there's probably like three different series, then I might not need it for a, you know, need that service for a while. So a contractor resource mm -hmm. fits better in that particular instance. I will say that I am planning to scale to more of a, a part-time, full-time resource for the virtual, which is currently called the virtual office manager. But the contractor resources, I think just give flexibility on both sides because as a contractor versus an employee, you know, you're here are the assignments, here are the dates, we kind of want things back. Um, and then you go, mm -hmm. you go manage your time and go do it. So there's benefit, I think, on both sides. But the flexibility is, you know, when you need to move resources in and out is very helpful. Yeah, exactly. I, that's what I love. It's sort. It's the um, on demand. You know, I don't need. Um, I'm trying to think of something I don't need. I, I'm to the point where I need everything all the time. Right. But because um, <laughs> I was thinking, wow, there was probably a time that I only used a copywriter once Whoa. in a while. But I've turned all my writing over to my copywriter at this point. She's so much better than me. And that's what I'm realizing. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm the best at this. I'm the best at this. I'm the best at that. Well, you can't be the best at everything. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just, you really aren't. Yeah. So, like, I was an average writer. And I turned my writing over. You know, I tried, to, I tried several different writers, quite honestly. And I found one who, she says my voice better. She has my voice in a way that's better than my own voice. Oh, wow. I'm that's like, gold. that's exactly what I really wanted to say. I just didn't know how to say that. That's gold. <laughs> so, oh. I, I'm going to tell you right now, um, I'm treating her very well because I don't want her going anywhere. And she, she has, she's full with clients most of the time. Okay. But, you know, when somebody gets really good at something, they can, you know, pick, be pickier and choosier. And so, yeah. she's narrowing down who she really works with to only do those things that she really loves doing rather than writing everything. So, yeah. and, and I do love that because um, like when COVID first hit for me, I, I didn't know what was going to happen even online. I thought what's going to happen. And I was like, okay, can everybody just, cause my whole team is um, independent contractors too. So I said, can everybody just do what absolutely has to be done this month? until we see what happens with COVID. And then my goal will be to go back full blast to everything you have on your list to do. Mm -hmm. um, but let's take a, a, you know, just a breath here. And we did. And by two weeks in, I'm like, okay, it's all going to be fabulous. Let's everybody go back. You've got your list of what to do. Go. Right. Um, but they're all part-time independent contractors. I, you know, cause if they're full-time, they become an employee. Right. And I don't want an employee. <laughs> <laughs> I want independent contractors yeah. um, because like you, I mean, I've had employees in other businesses that I've had. Um, and my first employee, she told me, she goes, I'm really feeling like you're just paying me to do the paperwork that the IRS requires to have an employee. I don't think I'm actually doing anything else for you. Oh, and wow. it really did feel like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I ended up shutting that business down um, because I wasn't, it wasn't profitable, but I learned a lot. Fail fast, right? And then build your next one. I love it. Um, so thanks for sharing that about the independent contractors. And do you have any tips on how best to, we're going to call it manage, um, get the most productivity out of your virtual team? 
Any tips um, for that? Know, I, I started using with my um my immediate um support that's you know I'm working with every week a um mm-hmm. a internal internet portal. Um and so mm-hmm. there's a portal um the that I use and, and we do all of our communications within the portal. And so if there's assignments or or PowerPoints that need to be updated or what have you, and it's it's just easier than email because you can see kind of the chain. So that's one tip. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people use other, you know, use various things, but um, I use a, a basically, basically a portal, a communication portal for. And um, is that is it the thing you're calling a portal? Is that something other people can use, or is that something yes, that's not available um, to the public? Clink. Would you mind sharing? Uh, yeah, clink. What is it? Clinked.com, C-L-I-N-K-E-D. Clinked.com is a white label portal. Um, and I also use it for um, clients, some clients as well, one-on-one clients. But it's a great... Oh, I love that idea, a white label portal. Yes. Custom. That's a great tip. Yes. Thank you. So clinked.com is what I use. So that's been one of the very helpful tips because everything is centralized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fabulous. Yeah. Great tips because um, I used to be really tied to my email and it just got overwhelming. And just yeah. like you said, it, uh, with thread. it's, you know, yes. where I can jump into the portal and okay, we were talking about creating these web pages. Mm-hmm. Okay. This mm-hmm. is done. This is okay. Cool. It's just easier than clicking mm-hmm. and trying to go back through and read through emails. Right. 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 Great tip. Thank you for sharing that. So I can't believe it, but we're coming close to the end of our time together here. I could talk to you all day, Charvette. So is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you wanted to be sure to share? You know what? I just want to leave with my favorite quote by H. Jackson Brown Jr. And opportunity dances with those already on the dance floor. So get on the dance floor. Ooh, get on the dance floor. Yeah. Oh, I leap, love leap that quote. Leap onto the dance floor. Leap onto the dance floor. Yeah, and you can leap up and down while you're there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, do you remember, and, and I'm sure you do because you were talking about this group that you started. Do you remember when you had just like maybe 10 or 15 or even 100 people there and you thought, this this is going to take forever? Do you Did you ever have those kind of thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I remember hosting like my first in-person event and I did Facebook ads. I was on so- social media. Blah, blah, blah. Two people showed up. Two people registered to oh, show yeah. up. A live event is not easy to get people to attend. A virtual event isn't even easy to get people to attend. Yeah. Yeah. But then you but, step forward. Now I'm going on my fifth conference and we have about 100 ladies every time that show up. Awesome. That yeah. is so awesome. Yeah. So what happens at your live events? So at my live events. What event, do you learn? What do you do? Who's it for? It's for emerging and, and scaling entrepreneurs. Only the girls can come. So it's all female. <gasps> Yeah, and I um, have a lot of, you know, just a lot. We do panel discussions. Um, This year, we've added breakout sessions, and I'll bring in, uh, you know, some heavy hitters mixed in with even some emerging. So, for instance, I'm actually wearing some jewelry by a young lady named um, Sassy, um, Sharice Jones, Sassy Jones Boutique, which, by the way, is a very great case study because she is online boutique booming busting out of the seams about to be on hsn all virtual she she actually had a store in richmond but the virtual business supersedes everything she's been busting out of the seams for the last couple years and so she came and spoke and this is her this is her necklace it's called the malia um sassy jones boutique so i'll have different you know people i've had um, Zandra Beauty, who's in Target, her mom, because um, she started the oh, she wow. started the business. She was like nine and ten years old, and her mom came and spoke. So I'll just bring in different people um, to speak entrepreneurship related topics. So it's awesome. Oh, I love it. So um, if you want, we'll put the link to the jewelry that you just talked about on our show notes too. And awesome. so here's my question. You know how I'm talking about I get on Google and just try to Google stuff. So I am really into how to get away with murder. And every time I watch it, uh-huh. um, the leading lady, whose name I'm blanking on right this second, I can't believe it, has the most amazing jewelry. Uh-huh. And I want that jewelry. I can't find they, it. It's hard because they hardly shout it out or tell what the stylists don't tell what because we've seen i know sassy jones i've seen like watching them like that's sassy jones but they don't 
they don't, for whatever yeah, reason, yeah. Yeah. Out, out what they're So wearing. do you think if I contact Sassy Jones, does she do um, requests like that? Like, the, like what made me think of it is your necklace right there reminds uh -huh. me kind of of the red necklace that, um, there's a couple of different red necklaces that were uh -huh. on that show. And I've been looking for that red necklace because I love red and I would love to have that. <laughs> wow. So I'm going to reach out to Sassy Jones and see. Yeah. Because this came in red in a couple different colors. So she's had a bunch Ooh. of stuff. And see, all yeah, yeah, yeah. the stylists, you know, those stylists go buy stuff all up. So, yeah, I'm sure you'll see something mm -hmm. very similar. Mm -hmm. that would meet your I, I'm going to go looking. I'm going to tell you right now. Because that's one of the things that I thought about is if I put like a really neat necklace like that on that it would uh, jazz me up a little bit more than nothing. But I mean, your tiara is, <laughs> you know. I know. That was the other thing. See, I need a stylist to tell me, if I have a necklace and a tiara, is that one too many? Because I'm not giving up the tiara. Right. That's <laughs> <laughs> I think you're still, oh. I think it's three, <laughs> over three success accessories you posted. Okay. You know, scaled. Okay. All right. Um, so, I love the information about your live event. And if you'll share that link with us, we'll put that on the show notes too. Absolutely. Uh, because um, live events are so special. Yes. And they really make a huge difference in your business, in yourself personally, mm -hmm. in the connections that you make. And this is coming from somebody who didn't leave her house for the first five years I started a business. Wow. Because... I'm an old white lady with gray hair, and I've got something in my eye. That's yeah. why I keep blinking like that. Uh -huh. um, I think I got a gray hair in my eye because um, <laughs> I got a fan on. Um, and then I was like, okay, I feel like the thing I'm missing out by building my business is going to a live event. I'm going to make myself go. Mm -hmm. And I did, and I was like, wow, I've been missing this. This is huge. Nothing like it. Nothing like it yes. at all. And, and, you know, again, I'm an online girl, but nothing like the energy that comes into the room when you've been, you know, people, hey, we've been friends on Facebook for six months and now we're meeting in person or, or people you've been in group coachings with and things, like, but you never physically met them. It is, it is nothing like it. So um, November 5th, 6th and 7th in Richmond, Virginia, Yes, it's going to be live and in person. I'm not canceling anything. We're going to be good. COVID is going to be gone. <laughs> Starbetmitchell.com will take you, take you to everything. So, well, Oh, good. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And so the, if there's, I know for sure there are people listening to this right now going, oh, Charvette is so inspirational. I need to talk to her. Tell us a little bit about the type of people that you really love to work with and how they can best get in touch with you. Yeah, um, I work best with leaders. And um, I am a leader who is really assigned to other leaders and uh, leaders professionally, uh, you know, those that are that have a full time professional job, but are doing some other things. So it really in that females that are in that in a leadership role, either professionally or their business is um, scaling, building uh, and emerging. Um, a lot of my clients, I have therapists, accountants, real estate agents, pastors, um, really are kind of the framework of um, the, the ideal clients that I work with. And so I'd love to offer, you know, consultation to just chat. If any of the listeners are like, hey, I think, I'm, you know, we might have a connection. Um, CharvetteMitchell.com, complimentary meet and greet call. We can just chat. Charvette, thank you so much for spending this time with us today. Thank you. We have having. gotten just gems falling everywhere here today. <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.